Last time on this Sonic Mania playthrough, I made my way through Green Hill, collected my first Chaos Emerald, and generally sucked as much ass as possible, mainly down to the Epic Game Store being bafflingly incompetent and not allowing you to use a controller. Since that episode, I've set up Mania to now run through Steam, which has universal controller support, and so I've removed my one excuse for being as bad as I am. That may have been a mistake, but regardless, with Eggman having teleported the duo of Sonic and Tails to Chemical Plant, it's time to get back into the zone. I don't know how much of a hot take this is, but Chemical Plant is probably one of my favourite zones in the Sonic series. If you can ignore the rising Megamac, which you really should, it's not that scary or difficult to get out of, it's one of the most unique and visually appealing levels in the franchise, and also isn't as omnipresent as a certain other zone and doesn't get remixed in every game it doesn't directly appear in, like said other zone. And straight away, the benefits of playing with a control scheme I understand is apparent. Drop dashes are used where intended, such as when compensating for a speedrunning trick that didn't work, and I'm actually able to jump out of the way of enemies. I only get about 30 seconds through Act 1 before I miss an opening route though, and this ends up affecting my decision making through the entire rest of the zone, jumping whenever I feel I've gone too far without an obstacle, generally only leading to me losing my momentum. Of course, almost every player's journey through Chemical Plant must at one point or another travel through the infamous moving block shaft, which quickly fills with Mega Mac, and I just so happen to take the absolute bottom path, meaning I have the greatest amount of height to cover. But the infamous nature of this section is really overblown in my opinion. Of course, if you're good, you can skip it entirely, but even just taking it slow and steady and not panicking when the drowning music plays makes you realise you really have plenty of time in what's really not that difficult of a platforming segment. I do decide to fly over the moving platforms immediately afterwards though, because I have memories of messing that jump up constantly in Sonic 2 and I don't want to relive them. I do manage to net myself an extra life and then quickly enter a bonus state after remembering they do, in fact, exist in Mania. Get blue balls, I mean, I mean spheres. Get blue spheres! I never really liked this mini game, but clearly I got a good map, seeing as I managed to net myself a perfect emblem on my first attempt. I did get the peel out after the finishing recording, but I can't remember whether that's for getting an emblem or for getting your first perfect emblem. But that bonus stage was for the mini boss checkpoint, which in Chemical Plant is the Omega droid. Put frankly, this robot is a complete joke. Obviously, I know its attack pattern. But even if you don't, they're so easy to avoid it that there's very little to worry about. All it does is drop into the Mega Mac at the bottom of the stage, swim around, bounce around a few times, then spin some bubbles around before repeating the loop again. But not in this case. If you know where it dropped from, you can hit it as it first appears, and because it doesn't pose a crushing risk, you can then sit below it and get a good couple of hits in. Then it leaves itself open whilst performing the bubble spin attack, so you can attack then, and then it sits there so you can take even more pot shots. It's destroyed before it can even complete a full attack cycle, and I probably spent an equal, if not greater, amount of time bouncing the signpost around to craft some extra points. And with a mighty 112 rings and having not been hit once, I'd probably sit there waiting for the score to total up for only a slightly lesser amount of time. There isn't really a mid-zone cutscene between Act 1 and Act 2 of Chemical Plant. The music changes, but all you do is walk forwards to instantly see the brand new gimmicks for the area. Chemical pipettes, sticky chemical transporters, and DNA elevators are all really fun new gimmicks, and I remember this being the one act me and my friends kept playing over and over again in competition mode. Considering my ultimate completion time, you wouldn't know that I usually won, but then I also can't remember the most efficient tube route, so I just go left every time. It still feels like I'm going pretty quickly though, or at least I'd say the gameplay looks and feels smooth. I end up with another two extra lives, because I'm very good at this game and never get hit once, even whilst equipped with a sealed, but ultimately, not all that much happens until reaching the act boss. And of course, we all know what boss this is. Eggman pulls out one of his oldest inventions, the Mean Bean Machine, and challenges Sonic to a round of definitely not Poyo Poyo. I have to be honest, I'm that guy in these sort of puzzle games who can't think further ahead than the next turn, so I'm sure this intense Poyo Poyo action looks quite sad to some more experienced block dropper pros. It's safe to say that I'm carried by Eggman having an even smoother brain than I do, but even he manages to pull off at least some actual combos once or twice. 
I do basically end up giving him the middle finger at the end though, and as a good sportsman, Robotnik has of course wired both sides of the mean bean machine to drop contestants who loosen to some sort of refuse tube, including his own side. But with the Mad Doctor defeated for at least a short while, Sonic and Tails jump back into the tube that's brought them here, begging the question of why they didn't do so earlier, and open Chemical Plant Capsule. Then it's just a short trip through some sort of interconnected sewer system to reach their next location, Mania's first and by far most famous original zone, Studiopolis. And with that, I hope you enjoyed the video, and so.